Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your fifth asynchronous JavaScript tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about async JavaScript with generators. Alright then guys, so generators are a relatively new addition to ES6, that's ECMAScript 6 and they're really cool when it comes to working with asynchronous JavaScript. So this isn't going to be an introduction to generators. If you want to learn them from the ground up, then I've got a tutorial video on this channel to explain that. And uh, you're welcome to go and check that out first. I'll leave the link down below. What I am going to do is have a brief overview of how to make them. And then we're going to dive into how we can use them with asynchronous code. So just to recap, how do we make a generator? We make it much like another function. We'll say function. But to specify that this is a generator, we pop a little asterisk right there after the function keyword. Then we give it a name, I'm going to call it gen, and then we set it up much like any other function. Except, in a nutshell, generators, we can pause. They're like pausable functions, right? And we can pause them using the yield keyword. So wherever it finds a yield keyword in the code within this code block right here, it's going to pause that function. So I could say something like this, var x equals yield 10 and what's going to happen when the code in this generator is fired javascript runs from right to left so it's going to run here it's going to grab this 10 and it's going to yield it and it's going to stop the generator right there it's going to pause it in essence right and then this value 10 is yielded which means it's passed out of the generator and we can use it out here somewhere okay then we can restart the generator by using the dot next method so let's just go through how we can do this I'm going to create a variable out here, and I'm going to set this equal to my gen, and I'll set this equal to the gen function like that. So you might think that this fires this code right here, but it actually doesn't. When generators are invoked like this, it just prepares them, it gets them ready, and then we use the dot next method on this, which is an iterable object, because this returns to us an iterable object. We can use the dot next method on that to start up the code, right? So let's do that. We'll say my gen dot next, like so. And when we do that, it's going to run the code up to here, grab that, and it's going to pause right there. And then this value is passed back to us here in an iterable object. So let's just log this to the console to see what it looks like. So I'm going to console.log my gen dot next. Press save, and you're going to see an object right here. This is an iterable object, right? And uh, you can see the value is a property on that which is passed back to us which is that 10 and this other property done is false and it's false because we've not completed the cycle through the generator yet we've paused halfway through this is only true when it reaches the end of the code so if i do the exact same thing here dot next again it's going to carry on to the end of the code and this time done is true the second time around, the value is undefined because we're not yielding another value. We're just reaching the end of the code and we're passing nothing back. We passed out the 10 the first time, nothing back the second time. Now, if we want to pass a value back in to the generator, we can do. We just pass it through the parenthesis. So, if you recall, the first time we call this next method, we're running the code and we're grabbing this and we're pausing here, yeah? Then the second time we run the next method, we're starting here and carrying on. So we can pass it in the second time a value, like 10 if we want, and then that's going to equal x. It's going to pass it back into the generator. Okay. So now we could say console.log x within here and press save. And then now you'll see that there logged into the console. Okay. Okay, so that's all well and good. That's what generators do, but how can this help us with asynchronous code? Well, let me just delete all this stuff right now. You're going to see an example that I've prepared over here. So I'm just going to uncomment this, and it might look a little scary at first, but really it's not. Okay, so we've got our generator right here. You can see the function with, the key, uh, with an asterisk. I've not named this generator purely because I'm just passing it as an argument into this genwrap function right here. But all this generator is doing is making some simple, uh, simple get requests and it's yielding those values back each time, right? And then when we pass a value back in, it's equaling it to these variables right here. So let me just run through what's going on in this gen wrap, this function. So we're passing through a generator into this gen wrap function right here, yeah? And the generator in this case is here. So 
the first thing we do is set gen equal to generator, right? And we'll create a variable called gen like that. So that's going to prepare the generator. That's all it's doing, which is this thing. It doesn't fire the code yet. Then we're defining a function called handle, but we've not called it yet, so we'll skip past that, uh, past that for now. Then we're returning this function right here, handle, and we're passing through gen.next. And if you remember, when we call the .next method, it's going to start firing the code. So what's going to happen as soon as we call this here is the code is going to fire right here. It's going to do this get request, and it's going to yield the result of that. Okay, So that's being returned to us in this thing right here, this iterable object that, uh, that's returned to us. So it's passing that object into this function handle, which is now this yielded variable. And if you remember, on that object, we have the done method. So I'm checking here that to make sure that we've not finished the generator. I'm saying for as long as this is not done, then we're going to carry on. OK, so then I'm going to get the value from that yielded um, object that's returned to us. And because the value of that object is this thing right here, this um, return from this request, and that return has uh, the promise interface built into it, then I can say dot then, all right? So once that happens and we retrieve data, dot then, I can fire this callback function, which takes in the data that it retrieves. So I've got that data that this thing here has retrieved now. Then I'm going to return the handle again, this function. So we're going to call that again. And this time we're going to call gen.next again, but explicitly pass through that data we've retrieved back into the generator. So the first thing that's going to happen is this code is going to fire up again. And it's going to pass this data back into here, which is now stored in tweets. We've gone out and grabbed that. And we're storing it in this variable. Then we can do something with it. I've just logged it to the console, so I'll show you that in a minute. And then we move on. We do the second request right here. And then this value is returned to us in the iterable object right here. OK, so then that's passed into the handle again, yielded. I'm checking that the generator is not done, which isn't. Then we're doing the same thing. We're getting the value of that iterable object. We're saying dot then. And we're using a callback function to grab that data and do exactly the same thing. We're going to store that data in friends. Then it does the same thing for this third one right here, which is videos. So this right now here is really cool because this looks like synchronous code. It's doing one thing after another, but in fact, it's asynchronous code. All right. So it's a way we can display asynchronous code synchronously. So it looks great. It's easy on the eye. And uh, yeah, it just is a, a nice way to do things. All right. So if I save this right now, then hopefully everything's going to work and we're going to see these objects um, logged to the console right here. First, we go out and get the tweets, then the friends then the videos. All right. So there we go, guys. That is how we can work with generators to um, make working with asynchronous code easy. All right. Now, I want to mention one thing. This smart code wrapper right here that I've written is a very, very basic one. Uh, you might not want to do it exactly this way if you're doing something for production, but you get the idea. This is just a simple one to show you kind of the inner workings of how we could do something like this using generators. And there are libraries out there which can do these things for you, these uh, kind of smart wrappers, if you like. Um, I think Q is one of them or Bluebird. So if you want to check those out, just uh, give them a quick Google and see what they can do for you also. But there we go, guys. That's how we use generators with asynchronous code. Any questions, leave those down below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.